Hey everybody, I am just reading this short story for those of you who would prefer to read along with the audio as opposed to just reading on your own. Um, again, it's optional to watch this video. You don't have to read with me if you'd like to read it at your own pace. Okay, this is the short story, Shame by Richard Gregory. I never learned hate at home or shame. I had to go to school for that. I was about seven years old when I got my first big lesson. I was in love with a little girl named Helene Tucker, a light complexion little girl with pigtails and nice manners. She was always clean and she was smart in school. I think I went to school then mostly to look at her. I brushed my hair and even got me a little old handkerchief. It was a lady's handkerchief, but I didn't want Helene to see me wipe my nose on my hand. The pipes were frozen again. There was no water in the house, but I washed my socks and shirt every night. I'd get a pot and go over to Mr. Ben's grocery store and stick my pot down in his soda machine and scoop out some chopped ice. By evening, the ice melted to water for washing. I got sick a lot that winter because the fire would go out at night before the clothes were dry. And in the morning, I'd put them on wet or dry because they were the only clothes I had. Everybody thought of Lean Tucker, a symbol of everything you want. I loved her for her goodness, her cleanness, her popularity. She'd walk down my street and my brothers and sisters would yell, here comes Celine, and I'd rub my tennis sneakers on the back of my pants and wish my hair wasn't so messy and that the Goodwill shirt fit me better. I'd run out on the street. If I knew my place and didn't come too close, she'd wink at me and say hello. That was a good feeling. Sometimes I'd follow her all the way home and shovel the snow off her walk and try to make friends with her mama and her aunts. I'd drop money on her stoop late at night on my way back from shiny shoes in the taverns. And she had a daddy, and he had a good job. He was a paper hanger. I guess I would have gotten over Helene by summertime, but something happened in that classroom that made her face hang in front of me for the next 22 years. When I played the drums in high school, it was for Helene. And when I broke track records in college, it was for Helene. And when I started standing behind microphones and heard applause, I wished Helene could hear it too. It wasn't until I was 29 years old and married and making money that I finally got her out of my system. Helene was sitting in that classroom when I learned to be ashamed of myself. It was on Thursday. I was sitting in the back of the room in a seat with a chalk circle drawn around it. The idiot seat, the troublemaker seat. The teacher thought I was stupid. Couldn't spell, couldn't read, couldn't do arithmetic, just stupid. Teachers were never interested in finding out that you couldn't concentrate because you were so hungry because you hadn't had any breakfast. All you could think about was noontime. Would it ever come? If you could sneak into the cloakroom and steal a bite of some kid's lunch out of a coat pocket, a bite of something. Paste. You can't really make a meal out of paste or put it on bread for a sandwich, but sometimes I'd scoop a few spoonfuls out of the big paste jar in the back of the room. Pregnant people get strange tastes. I was pregnant with poverty, pregnant with dirt, and pregnant with smells that made people turn away, pregnant with cold, and pregnant with shoes that were never bought for me, pregnant with five other people in my bed and no daddy in the next room, and pregnant with hunger. Taste doesn't taste too bad when you're hungry. The teacher thought I was a troublemaker, and she saw from the front of the room, all she saw from the front of the room was a little boy who squirmed in the idiot's seat and made noises and poked all the kids around him. I guess she couldn't see a kid who made noises because he wanted someone to know he was there. It was on a Thursday, the day before payday. The teacher was asking each student how much his father would give to the community chest. On Friday night, each kid would get money from his father, and on Monday, he would bring it to school. Let's quickly look at the definition of community chest. Community chest was a collection of money donated from a community that would be used to help families who suffered from poverty or a tragedy that affected them financially. All right, the teacher was asking each student how much his father would give to the community chest. On Friday night, each kid would get the money from his father, and on Monday, he would bring it to the school. I decided I was going to buy a daddy right then. I had money in my pocket from shining shoes and selling papers, and whatever Helene Tucker pledged for her daddy, I was going to top it, and I'd hang the money right in, hand the money right in. I wasn't going to wait until Monday to buy me a daddy. I was shaking, scared to death. The teacher opened her book and started calling names alphabetically. Helene Tucker? My daddy said he'd give $2.50. That's very nice, Helene. Very, very nice indeed. That made me feel pretty good. It wouldn't take too much to top that. I had almost $3 in dimes and quarters in my pocket. 
I stuck my hand in my pocket and held onto the money waiting for her to call my name, but the teacher closed her book and she called everybody else in the class. I stood up and raised my hand. What is it now? You forgot me. She turned toward the blackboard. I don't have time to be playing with you, Richard. My daddy said he'd... Sit down, Richard. You're disturbing the class. My daddy said he'd give $15. She turned around and looked mad. We are collecting this money for you and your kind, Richard Gregory. If your daddy can give $15, then you have no business being on relief. Let's go down and look at what relief means. Relief is an older term that refers to welfare. A family on relief would be given food stamps and money from the government to help them pay their bills. I got it right now. I got it right now. My daddy gave it to me to turn in today. My daddy said, and furthermore, she said, looking right at me, her nostrils getting big and her lips getting thin and her eyes opening wide. We know you don't have a daddy. Helene Tucker turned around, her eyes full of tears. She felt sorry for me. Then I couldn't see her too well because I was crying too. Sit down, Richard. And I always thought the teacher kind of liked me. She always picked me to wash the blackboard on Friday after school. That was a big thrill. It made me feel important. If I didn't wash it come Monday, the school might not function right. Where are you going, Richard? I walked out of school that day, and for a long time, I didn't go back very often. There was shame there. Now there was shame everywhere. It seemed like the whole world had been inside that classroom. Everyone had heard what the teacher had said. Everyone had turned around and felt sorry for me. There was shame in going to the Worthy Boys annual Christmas dinner for you and your kind, because everybody knew what a Worthy Boy was. Why couldn't they just call it the Boys annual dinner? Why why did they have to give it a name? There was shame in wearing those brown and the brown and orange and white plaid Mackinac the welfare gave to 3,000 boys. Why did it have to be the same for everybody so when you walked down the street, the people could see you were on relief? It was a nice warm Mackinac and had a hood and my mama beat me and called me a little rat when she found out I stuffed it in the bottom of a pail full of garbage way over on Cottage Street. There was shame in running over to Mr. Ben's at the end of the day and asking for his rotten peaches. There was shame in asking Mrs. Simmons for a spoonful of sugar. There was shame in running out to meet the relief, the relief truck. I hated that truck, full of food for you and your kind. I ran into the house and hid when it came, and, when I, and then I started to sneak through alleys to take the long way home so that people going into White's Eat Shop wouldn't see me. Yeah, the whole world heard the teacher that day. We all know you don't have a daddy. It lasted for a while, this kind of numbness. I spent a lot of time feeling sorry for myself. And then one day I met this wino in a restaurant. I'd been out hustling all day, shining shoes, selling newspapers, and I'd had goo gobs of money in my pocket. Bought me a bowl full of chili for 15 cents and a cheeseburger for 15 cents and a Pepsi for 5 cents and a piece of chocolate cake for 10 cents. That was a good meal. I was eating when this old wino came in. I love winos because they never hurt anybody, anyone but themselves. Hey, again, wino is an old term which would not be appropriate to use anymore. That would refer to someone that drinks too much, most likely someone who's homeless. The old wino sat down at the counter and ordered 26 cents worth of food. He ate it like he really enjoyed it. When the owner, Mr. Williams, asked him to pay the check, the old wino didn't lie or go through his pockets like he suddenly found a hole. He just said, don't have no money. The owner yelled, why in the hell did you come in here and eat my food? If you don't have no money, that food costs me money. Mr. Williams jumped over the counter and knocked the wino off his stool and beat him over the head with a pop bottle. Then he stepped back and watched the wino bleed. And then he kicked him and he kicked him again. I looked at the wino with blood all over his face. And I went over, leave him alone, Mr. Williams. I'll pay the 26 cents. The wino got up slowly, pulling himself up to the stool and then up to the counter, holding on for a minute till his legs stopped shaking so bad. He looked at me with pure hate. Keep your 26 cents. You don't have to pay, not now. I just finished paying for it. He started to walk out and as he passed me, he reached down and touched my shoulder. Thanks, Sonny, but it's too late now. Why didn't you pay it before? I was pretty sick about that. I waited too long to help another man. All right, guys, that's the story. I hope you enjoyed it.